Hey, it's Joel. You know, I just put out a video not that long ago where I showed you how to make holes using Mesh Mixer to put magnets into models and make really cool refrigerator magnets. There's been some comments on that video. I want to address some things. Also, I want to tell you just how much money we raised for Seattle Children's Hospital. It's going to be great, and we're going to do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. There you are. Welcome back. First, let's talk about this giant box of envelopes here. I put 25 mini Joel refrigerator magnets on sale at noon the day of the video release. And I was for a limited time, 25 only, limited edition. And I said, look, once they sell out, they're gone, they're done. The listing went live at noon and it was like seven minutes later, it was completely and totally sold out. You all did amazing. Thank you so much. It's always great when we can combine some fun with raising money for a very worthy cause. That cause being Seattle Children's Hospital. And thanks to the mini Joel magnets that Wexter gave the permission for me to do this to, just wanna make sure that's out there, we raised in seven minutes for Seattle Children's Hospital $500. Bam! Just like that, $500. People are getting good stuff. I packed everything up. I glued all the magnets in. It was great. All of these are gonna go to the mailbox once I get there in the morning. It's awesome. So thank you. Thank you so, so very much. It means that this is something that you would hopefully want to see again. So stay tuned for the future when we may do this again. You know, I did show you how to do this using those build tech magnets and they worked incredibly well as refrigerator magnets yes they failed in the build tech sheet but whatever we made use of them not everybody is going to have spare magnets from a build tech sheet which means that you need to get little magnets like this here are some ceramic disc magnets and here are some neodymium ring magnets all of these are easily measured with calipers i got these at my local home improvement store but a ton of these are available on Amazon for really cheap prices. I'm gonna put some down in the description. Go ahead and click those links and you can get 100 magnets for like 10 bucks. Make a bunch of refrigerator magnets yourself. Sell them, make money, donate to charity. Be awesome. It's a good time to be alive. One more thing before we get into it. Uh, this is a little bit off topic, but I picked up these. These are Wise Cams. These are IP addressable. I don't want to say security cams, but they're very security cam-ish. Uh, they do time lapse. They do 1080p HD. They do remote viewing via an app. And this one is like $20, $25. This one is, I think, $30? 35, I don't know, it's pan. So what this one will do, it'll rotate and look up and down, which is crazy. And the reason I'm telling you about this is because I picked these up, I wanted to use them as cameras for my printers because, well, right now when I do a time lapse, it's a GoPro and that's like 400 bucks per printer. It's just not possible. Yes, Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi cams are another thing. Lots of people do time lapses like Wild Rose Builds. Uh, that, that look amazing, that use a DSLR to capture it. This was a solution I was exploring. I find it very interesting because it offers a lot for a very cheap price, so I wanna make sure I told you about it. This is not sponsored in any way. This is me finding something cool, being really excited about it, and telling you about it. So they're called Wise Cams. I will put links in the description. They work incredibly well for me, and that's why I'm recommending you check them out. All right, that in mind, uh, you know what? We should probably get two things. There were some comments on, why don't you just embed the magnets, Joel? There was like one or two or 20 of those. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that. And also, we're going to explore a different way of uh, making the cutouts in the model. We're not gonna use a Boolean difference. We're gonna use an age old trick that I learned from Angus Devson of Maker's Muse in 2016 where we flip normals. Well, I think it's time. Let's get to it. Hey, look at that. It's Mesh Mixer. This is where I left you off. We have those two dropped parts in there and we have the model right up above. But with comments, there were people saying, look, you need to embed the magnets. Lots of people. And then someone, I don't remember who, said, you need to go look at the Maker's Muse video from 2016 titled flip normals in mesh mixer to create pins voids and dot 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 question mark that's exciting not just because of the title but because of 2016 angus just look at how young he looks that was a long time ago 
just want to pinch his cheeks. Now, okay, go, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Obviously, you're gonna wanna go see that. So let's embed the magnets first, and then let's use the Maker's Muse video tutorial that shows us how we flip normals to make a better cut. Tinkercad does Boolean operations incredibly well. Mesh mixer, eh. Here's how we do it. Select drop part one, edit, and transform. Because we're not gonna have it hanging out the bottom, we're gonna go two. That's the actual size we want. In fact, we're gonna go to this copy here and we're just gonna do the same thing. Two. Just like that. So now we have one millimeter below the model and one millimeter above and inside of the model. And you can tell, so there's our plane right there. So now what we wanna do is select these two. We wanna transform and we want them to go up so that they are inside the model by one millimeter. So if we do two, now, uh, because they were on the center of the plane, that's where zero was. So if we move them one, then that one that's hanging out below the plane is on the plane. And then we do two to bring that bottom part up a millimeter. So both of these exist one millimeter inside the model. I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. Can't see them right now. But what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna flip some normals. So if you have, there we go. These selected, go to, I'm sorry, if you go, uh, you have to have one object. So you go select, you hit it once, and then you hit control A. And what that is, so hitting it once selects the object, hitting control A selects the entire object. You go to edit, and then edit, and then down to flip normals, just like that. Let's do it with the other one. Let's see, we're gonna select the object, select, click, control A, edit, flip normals. There we go. These are now voids. So I like to think of it like Photoshop and inverse selection. If you select something, this is your thing. If you inverse selection, everything outside of that is your thing and the inside is a void. This is like doing that, but in three dimensions. In fact, let's see, there's our model and it's got these inside. So with this selected, let's go edit. Let's do a plain cut. And you can see them on the inside. In fact, let's rotate it around go like this and then as we pull it through there we go you can see that void in there so the voids are something that aren't printable because it's open empty space it doesn't exist so now we've created voids inside the model that's great now now let's go look at them in slicer prusa edition here's the model in slick 3r and uh it looks normal looks great good job but if I hit slice now, then I go to preview. This is where the magic is, right here. Oh, did you see it? Do, 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 do. There it is. Look at that. One. There we go. Okay, so 0. 0.65, I guess, is where the slicer's putting it. Here's the important part. So pay attention. So as we scroll up, and then it, there we go. It bridges across. So if we look right here, it's at 2.6 millimeters that the bridging starts. So what we need to do is figure out a way to tell the machine to stop printing, wait for a bit so that we can insert magnets, well, and, and then let it go about its business, right? One of the ways you can do that is with Prusa Control. So if we load the model into Prusa Control, here it is, and then generate. It's gonna go through. Come on, you can do it. So as we scroll through the model, we can see this. And if we get 2.6 millimeters, there's this little plus sign. If we hit that plus sign, that is a color change operation. That will tell the printer to stop, park for a bit. And then in this case, it's a G-code M600. And that M600 tells the printer to park for a bit, spit out the filament, wait for new filament, make sure the temperature is right, and then continue printing. So if we save out this G-code, you'll see an M600 in there. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this G-code. I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna export it right here. I'm gonna hit save, and there it goes. So what I can do now is open up this file, and what we can do is search for that layer. So I'm gonna do a Control F, and the layers are indicated, as you can see right here, with a semicolon and then the height of the layer. The semicolon in G-code tells the printer to ignore it. Anything to the right of the semicolon is ignored. So what we need to do is look for semicolon 2.6. There it is. That's great. Okay, this is what the G-code looks like when it doesn't have any sort of stoppage in it. So what I'm gonna do in Prusa Control is save the G-code Go to video and I'm gonna say from 
Prusa control dot G code, G code, I can spell. It saved it out. That's great. Now we can open that up and we can do a search for semicolon 2.6. There it is, 2.6. Ah, but look, 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 right here. That M600 was added. That command, that G code command that tells the printer to wait because you want to change the filament or do a color change. Another way of doing that is right here. If you go to prusaprinters.org slash color dash print, you can drop G code right here, put in a place where you want the color change to happen, and then you download the G code. And essentially what it does is it goes through and did what we did manually, where we looked for the place, and then that's where the M600 would go. Prusa Control obviously didn't automatically for us. This website would also do it automatically for us. Well, we have the right G code and we have that color change in. Let's send it to the printer and let's see what happens. Ah, okay, so this was great. So it worked in that it was able to stop the printer and let us add the magnets, but it's enabling a color change operation. We wanna keep using the same filament. I don't see any need for us to have to eject it and put it back in, so there must be a better way. After digging around on the internet, I found this, a forum moderator on the Prusa 3D forums. Her name is Joan and she is a wonderful person. Look at this, try this. Here is these commands right here. And actually this top one, get the Prusa to stick its tongue out. What she's talking about is having the build plate go forward instead of backward, forward so it's easy to work on. That's great. All we have to do is take that G code, go in here and where it says M600, let's just put a semicolon and then a few enters and then put it right there. That's all we have to do. It's that simple. Here's what it's doing. G1, X10, Y10 is telling the extruder head to move to these coordinates. And it's telling E0 uh, means the, the filament extruder or the, the, the filament, it doesn't get extruded. Uh, M1 is user stop, that's like a pause. And then M105, return to current temp. So the M1 waits for user input and that's the button click. Once we click the button, then M105 says return to current temp and then once it's at current temp, it keeps printing. It's, it's great. So let's take this to the printer and let's see if it works. Oh, so close, so close. The bed didn't come out. The bed, the Prusa didn't stick its tongue out. Here's the problem and here's the solution. If you keep reading, it says, oh, Joan, if the extruder is in the way, change Y10 to Y200. Essentially, Y10 is, since the, the bed backwards is, is homed to zero, that's the zero position, so the bed needs to be forward a bit. So if we change the Y10 to Y200, it should work, and that's easy, because you just take this right here and you put in 200. Uh, let's save this, let's print this, and let's see if the machine does what we're hoping to do. There we go, that's it! Yes, yes, we did it. We were able to embed the magnets in the print and we were able to stop the printer without having to do a color change operation. It was extremely simple edits to a G-code file. And a G-code file has nothing but text with a bunch of instructions in it. And I showed you how to find the position of where you need to put these sort of things and you're good to go. You could do this to put magnets or other things that you want to insert into your print at different levels. 
There is no stopping you at this point. You are a G-Code superhero. Well, we have these magnets printed. Let's see if they work. Listen, I've got a Prusa build plate. It's flex steel and I've got these magnets. So can't even really tell them apart, but they're printed in Polyalchemy FX. This is the, uh, the granite, I think. So here's the test. They should just stick to this just fine. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. They work just fine. And on the back, there is nothing. There is nothing. Look at that. You can't even tell. Oh, so cool. Well, there we go. This is another way that you can use your 3D printer to insert objects into your prints and make them awesome. Big thanks to Angus, 2016 Angus, for giving us that little video about voids. That was awesome. Thanks to everybody who left a comment in the previous video saying, embed the magnets. I did it. Big thanks to everybody that uh, helped raise $500 for Seattle Children's Hospital in seven minutes. Oh my goodness. And uh, you know what? Look at that. Magnets and cams, both fairly inexpensive, both provide a lot of value, and links to these will be in the description. Hey, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what we did here, go ahead and subscribe. According to analytics, 34% of my viewers are subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe. Or don't. Just continue watching my content. I don't care. You know what? Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.